Hello there, my name's Edgar, and I'm going to be narrating this one-wheel ride. This isn't my first one-wheel ride, obviously. It's been calling this one Ride 1 as in the first ride I documented. So right up front, it's going to look kind of rough because, you know, I had a GoPro mount on my helmet, and it seemed alright in the preview when I was just standing on my feet. And then when I actually got on the board, you know, the angle must have changed a little bit. It looks a little bit like it's pointed towards the ground. So I gotta adjust that for future videos. And it just looks kind of like it's, you know, not on the right plane. That one has to be because of my head and then I'm having to twist and turn. So I gotta work that out. How do I get a better image? Like I said, this is uh, my first documented ride. This is also the first time of me going down this route. What I'm doing today is just taking a quick trip to Jamba Juice, just because. I think I might have like some kind of special promo, so I wanted to check it out. I'm a little bit nervous anytime I go down a new route that I've never been with you with, with on my one wheel. Um, I'm not super advanced on my one wheel at this point. I mean, I'm competent and can get around safely, but think about going someplace new. You know, I'm not familiar with the sidewalk, with any kind of cracks or bumps or anything unexpected. So anytime I come kind of any intersection, I'm always like looking over my shoulder making sure there's a car that's about to come and hit me. I start off this from my apartment and I'm going down and so this is my neighborhood. And it's, you know, it's east side of San Jose. It's not exactly a posh part of town. You know, you can see a lot of litter, unfortunately. And yeah, it's just trash and remnants of maybe some of the homeless community. Now up here, there is like a metal plate in the sidewalk that, uh, it did give me a little bit of scare when it first went through. You can hear that clanging sound. So as I'm going through here, I'm checking the intersection. Like I said, I'm just always a little bit nervous for any intersection. This ended up being a fairly decent ride as far as the condition of the pavement and the sidewalks and all that, except for like one or two spots that were pretty rough, I'll point out. like. There's some parts that you wouldn't think they would throw you off, but it's like sometimes just the weirdest bumps transitioning from one smooth plane to a rougher ring that can throw off the one wheel. And I'm sure part of that is just because I'm still intermediate and in my skill level. What's interesting about this ride, it's kind of a longer ride. When you start first learning to do the on a one wheel, you're like, you'll get like fatigued real quick on your feet. And it's like a combination of like using new muscles on the bottom of your feet you probably don't normally use and then just being tight and tense and then not being relaxed and that makes it even worse. Here at this point, I can go pretty far without getting any fatigue. Um, probably a little bit tense like I said because it's a new route. Mostly it's just going through it this long and after a while, you know, even though I've probably built up some muscles in my calves and my feet, you still get kind of fatigued. So anytime I could stop, that was always nice. So I said before, this angle, I'm not a fan of it because it's a little low. It's funny because I have another one wheel ride um, where I'm at a May Day event and I had the opposite problem where it seemed just too high. I wasn't pointing out the sky necessarily, but it's just, it just was a little bit too high. So you need to find the happy medium. There's got to be, you know, the right spot where things look more straight ahead and you get a wider view not just the ground or too far up ahead. Sometimes it's funny, you see cars kind of aggressively approach the intersection, you wonder, are they going to stop? And then they kind of slam, not slam hard, but they brake kind of harder. Wonder why they don't just ease into it. And here, this inter intersection is kind of scary for multiple reasons. First, it's the on ramp for the freeway. There's no light. There's just people just yield or don't yield, and they go when they think they go, like these, that white car there. And it's super rough. Um, I don't know if it comes through, but I mean, it is really bumpy. Like here's a pretty good bump, and it's like, do I go around it or go over it? And I've got to sort of trust what I'm capable of doing it. But that intersection, going both ways, is was the roughest one and uh, I think at one point I've been through this route and I did almost lose my balance mostly because I wasn't have enough speed. The thing about these rough parts is like 
it's easier if you have some speed with you because then you just kind of glide over the bumps. When you're, especially when you're first starting out, your instinct is to slow down because you're scared and you don't want to, you know, fall, but that actually probably increases your chance of falling because you're going too slow to get over even what is, ends up being really a minor bump. And if you just had a little bit more confidence and speed to go through it, but it's a, it's a learning experience. This is the off-ramp of that same freeway. And uh, I think I had to stop here, make my turn. It's a, at this point, I was probably enjoying having a break. But again, sometimes you know, the roads are just rough, like here, it's pretty rough. If I had enough speed, it's fine. It's probably, the problem is I had to stop and try to get my minimum back, and it's kind of a tight squeeze there. I think this ride was like a total, like, let me double check here. I think it was like, it ended up being about close to 25, 20 minutes, just one way. So what I'm riding on is the Pint X, which uh, at this, this recording is one of their newer current models. The company is called Future Motion, and the one wheel is the product. They're an interesting company. I don't know a whole lot about them. I know they were kind of like a hot company when they first came up with the product a few years ago. It was because we had never seen that before, Electro uh, electric motorcycle or electric skateboard with just one big wheel in the middle. It's kind of an interesting design. I know, you know, they're still technically a smaller company and they've got some growing pains and with these last two models they came out with, the Pint X and uh, the One Wheel GT, they had some issues with their launch, um, especially with the GT, so I'm kind of glad I skipped that on that. I skipped that out that one with the Pint X, which is kind of like a one step down, mainly because of the price. These things are not super affordable and they're kind of a privileged thing to be able to get your hands on. The power and like all the like feature set that came with the GT was just more than I needed anyways. I mean, I'm not probably going to do a whole lot of off-roading and things like that, What you could do with the GT. It's got a different type of tire and it's got a lot more power. And for me, this pint's already got probably more than enough power to get me in trouble. You can really, really get hurt if you don't have like the proper gear. So definitely if you get into this, helmet of some kind. I'm going to full face helmet, which I think most one wheel riders are just using like a bicycle helmet or some kind of open face helmet. You'll be able to see a little bit up ahead uh, that I'm also wearing like shin guards. I also have uh, wrist guards and I'm also wearing elbow guards. What's also interesting here, besides getting a look at my safety gear, is that when I continue on, instead of going through the main path that we can walk through, I just go over the curb, which is not a super advanced technique, but it's not as simple as you would think. That sudden little drop, even though it's just a few inches, like right there, can throw you off and it's easy to just take a tumble. So that's kind of a intermediate sort of advanced kind of thing I've learned. You know, I'm kind of an older guy. Like I when I was growing up, I never I always wanted to learn how to skateboard and things like rollerblade, but uh, I just never did. Either couldn't get my hands on it, or my parents won't let me, or whatever. This is I mean, I want to know if you would call this an extreme sport or whatever, but it's like, you know, that kind of like snowboarding, skateboarding, that kind of alternative export kind of thing. And I've gotten to this pretty late in life. I am got this when I was 40, so I'm not any spring chicken. So in the back of my mind, I'm a little freaked out about having a bad accident because, you know, you don't heal as well when you get to these kind of ages. Which, funny enough, is probably going to contribute to me more likely getting into an accident, being freaked out about it. But because, like I said, you need a lot of confidence and knowledge of your skill and ability definitely being timid or too timid is uh can get you in more trouble obviously you don't want to be too cocky and it'd be doing stuff that's at beyond your skill level try to be too advanced but being too timid like i said can get you into those accidents that you're trying to avoid i have all this gear to sort of protect me 
I don't go crazy. This pint X has different modes, and I think in even one of them, it goes up to close to 30 miles an hour, which is, you know, think about doing 30 miles an hour on a sidewalk. I mean, it should, you know, be in a street at that point. Um, that's pretty fast. I mean, at that kind of speed, with the right, you know, situation and circumstances, that could kill you. I don't go anywhere near that fast. I mean, I think my top speed was once like 20 or 22, which is... I wasn't even trying. It was kind of one of the things where I was just going and I got in the zone and then I kind of noticed I was going really fast, like faster than I really needed to. I wasn't going anywhere. I was just zoned out. So it's really easy to just, you know, lose sight of that and go pretty fast. Um, I think luckily I had it on one of the other modes that kind of holds back the speed, so it wasn't going to go much faster than that. We're getting into more businesses and away from the home, so it's a, a little bit more upkept. Just because obviously businesses don't want to uh, discourage people from coming in with a bunch of trash or whatever. But being set East San Jose, it's it's got its own charm, I guess you could say that. Um, I mean, not to diss on it, I mean, I live here, but it's obviously not Beverly Hills or anything like that. And here's kind of a pet peeve, so, you know, you gotta share the sidewalk and all, but people, because obviously like, with the pine, I'm moving faster than I would walking, and then you got people who are just walking, and they're, even if they're walking normal, but especially if they're walking slow, it's like, okay, I gotta, like, time this so I don't, because I'm trying to shoulder check anyone, but if somebody walks right down the middle, it's like, <clears throat> excuse me, can I get through, please? Want to side, up to one side, please. I guess I could also try jumping into the bike lane. Um, Got to admit, one time I jumped in the bike lane when I was first starting out. I don't know what happened. I think because the, the streets a little bit um, tilted or cantered, I, I kind of ate it a little bit, and I've been kind of discouraged from that. I was like, well, I'll just make sure I won't go too fast and stick to the sidewalk, because at least that's flat. And then, um, yeah, I think the bike lane, just because they have the curb and they have the as the water's got to drain off into the gutter, it's like cantered a little bit. Although here in San Jose it's always a drought, so I don't know what water we're expecting to get. Even just watching this back, I mean, it didn't seem so long doing the ride. It was a fun, pleasant ride, even though I was worried about this new route, but this makes for uh, a long watch. I'm sure there'll be stuff cut out. But here we are, we're finally getting to the main shopping center that has the Jamba Juice. I think right about here, oh, not right here, in the next intersection. I'm gonna just stop for a second to do my order online, just cause I have no, I have an order ready to go, I can get in and out. I remember though, I having a heck of a time with the app for some reason, it was just a pain. But here we go, eventually I got, I think I got something queued up in the app and go along my way. Actually on this day, Everything looks fairly clean except for that garbage right there. I think uh, whoever the maintenance must have came through recently. Like this isn't so bad. Like this is like a big shopping area with like a Target. So obviously they probably spent a little bit more money and time grooming the grounds and keeping everything reasonably clean. But here we are coming up on the end. And I just want to thank everyone for coming along with me on this one ride with an admittedly awkward camera angle something I'm going to have to work on and I'm going to look into using a gimbal with my phone so I can get like an alternative shot and that's just going to take a little bit of practice though just because riding safely is one thing and then having a gimbal with a smartphone and trying to get distant shots makes it more complicated obviously but I have another one real one wheel ride coming up that's probably going to look similar to this, but then hopefully after this it'll be a little bit fixed and a little bit more polished. But again, thanks for riding with me and checking out this random video, and I'll see you around. Bye.